Hello, this is Dave Wilson at the University of North Florida Center for Instruction and Research Technology. In this recording, I'm going to show you how you can add a Twitter feed to a Blackboard course at UNF. I've done a couple things to prepare for this. The first thing I did was log into Blackboard and go to the course where I'm going to add the feed, actually the, the content area. So here I'm in course information. The other thing is I've logged into Twitter. So what we need to do is we need to get the embed code for the Twitter feed that we can add into Blackboard. And if you go to Twitter and you look under help, so I'm just going to click on the icon for my profile here and click on help. And you search for things like embed. When you search for embed, the help that it brings up has information on how to embed a tweet, but you want to embed your whole feed. So this will is good if you just want one tweet, but not for the whole feed. And it also lets you add buttons. So if we go here, there's an, more instructions for how to add buttons to a website. So follow me on Twitter kind of thing. Again, this is great if you just want people to be able to follow you on Twitter, but it's not what we're looking for today. So what I have found is if you actually go to Google and do a search for Twitter widget, the first search result is twi Twitter widgets, and you can see that it's from Twitter the company and it's a confirmed link. You get the little green padlock here. So uh, twitter.com slash about slash resources slash widgets. I'll put a link to it with this video. Um, brings you to the correct place. So now what we want to do is select the type of widget. So I'm going to choose my website. And here we have some choices. So the profile widget at describes here displays your most recent Twitter updates on any web page and that's what we're looking for. You may also be interested in some of these other widgets. Feel free to look at them and try them out. But for now let's go into profile widget. So I'm going to click on that. And then because I'm already logged into Twitter, the profile widget knows that my username is certunf underscore bb. And on the right hand side of the screen you can see an example of how the widget will look. And on the left hand side of the screen you have some options. So let's go into the preferences. I'm just going to click on that. And you'll notice here that what you can do is you can pull for new results and you can include a scroll bar. I'm not going to worry about either of those for this video. And you can also set the behavior on how it works. And the timed interval will basically cause the Twitter feed to refresh after so much time has passed. So if you expect your students to be on one Blackboard page for a long period of time, you could actually go in and set that to um, update continuously. Uh, at this point, I'm just going to set it to load all tweets and not worry about it. You can also control the number of tweets. So you can click on the button here to increase and you can probably type something in uh, in the text box too. So I'm going to change it to six just to show you. Um, when you want an updated view of your widget over here on the right, you have to click on this test settings button down at the bottom. Now you can see here that instead of four tweets, we have six. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Great, wonderful. So I'm going to go ahead and change it back to four just to make things a little bit easier, and that's really all I want to use for this example. So one, two, so we're at four. Test my settings again, and okay, great, we're back at where we started. The other thing you can do is change the appearance. So this is basically the colors of how it looks. So you see you have the shell around the outside, then you have the background for each tweet and the colors of the text. So instead of having this really dark one, let's change it to make it a little bit lighter. So instead of a dark gray background, I'm just going to change that to maybe a lighter gray background. Just click on the color here and it brings up a color chooser and you can select the color you'd like. So now I'm going to change the text because white doesn't stand out really well on this light gray background. So I'm going to click on the little box again and just drag it down here into the black. Okay, so now I want to change the background. So let's choose some white. 
Okay, great. And again, we can't see the text, so let's go ahead and choose black. And for the links, I'm going to choose the Time Honored Web Standard Blue. And say done. Okay, great. You can see it made the changes as we were updating, so you really don't have to click on test settings. I'm going to do it anyway just to be safe. So, okay, good, this looks wonderful. Again, you could customize this, so it really depends on the design of your Blackboard site and the colors you want to use. Um, make sure it's something that your students will be able to read easily. If you do things like yellow text on a white background, it's going to be hard to read, so you'll want to avoid that. The last option you have here on the left is dimensions, and this controls the size of your Twitter feed. I think that the height is pretty good, but it could be a little bit wider. So I'm going to go in here and change the width from 250. Let's just up it to 500, make it double. And I'm going to say test settings again, but in this case, I don't think it will actually change the width of the widget. Let's see what happens. Yeah, see, it just um, stays the same. You kind of have to trust Twitter that it's going to make it wider. So now that I have this customized the way that I like it, I'm going to click on Finish and Grab Code. So now it changes this box into a code box, and if you click on it once, you notice that it highlights everything, and I am just going to right-click and choose Copy. So now I am going to go back up into the Blackboard tab, and if you're not familiar with tab browsing, I'd encourage you to try it out. It's a great way to surf the web. So here I have Blackboard open, Twitter, Blackboard, Twitter, can go back and forth, and it basically saves your place on each page. And here's my widget. So I have everything open, and they're all in the same window, but I can get to each one really quick. So now that I've copied the code, we need to create a place in Blackboard to add it. So I went to the course information area of this dummy course that I have, and now I'm going to go to Build Content and choose Create Item and I am going to give it a name. Let's call it My Tweets. Okay, so now what we need to do is we need to paste that code into this text box, but there's one more step. Right now, if we pasted it in, it would paste it as text, so your students would be able to read that code, which really isn't that great. What we need to do is to set this to be in code view and the way that you do that is by clicking the less than, greater than sign here on the toolbar. So you can see when you put your mouse over it that it says toggle HTML source mode. That's what we want. So I'm just going to click on that. And then I am going to right click in here and paste the code in there. And I'm just going to scroll up to make sure that it's all in here. Everything looks good. And there was already a little piece of code in here. I'm just going to leave that where it is. The BR just makes the line go down one, so it's going to be fine. So now I'm going to click on Submit, and you see that my tweets are now showing in this content area. So you could do this in a content area, you could do it in announcements, you can even have more than one Twitter feed in your course. I'm not sure why you'd want to do that, but it is definitely an option. If you have any questions, please refer to our website at www.unf.edu/cirt. Thank you for watching.